what is going on guys we have a very exciting video I'm super excited I know you guys have been watching the videos all week liking the videos commenting we got a big change and it is right there Whipple 3.8 liter we're down here at Palm Beach Dino again uh, the car has a tune in it it's probably actually pretty much already tuned usually these tunes are already good remote tuned we're gonna see what it pumps out on the dyno Ken Rob and all the guys here so I'm really excited to see what it does and we should have a lot better uh, temps overall, and uh, this is basically getting me closer to my uh, eight second quarter mile pass hole uh, with the car, you know, keeping a stick shift and as streetable as we can. Obviously, we don't have a hood on the car, uh, but we do have some K-member spacers coming down so we can put the stock hood back on the car and we'll be good to go. So if you are not familiar, this is a Whipple 3.8 liter. This is their brand new uh, twin screw supercharger. Uh, they learned a lot from the Gen 5 3 liter and the 2.9 Whipples, brought it into this one. I'm super excited to see what it is. Whipple 150 millimeter throttle body, 10% lower, fully built 5.8. Uh, we got a Mantic triple disc and a lot more stuff to list, but that is the basic rundown. I'll have a list down in the description of everything done to this car, but we're on pump E85. Let's see what it does. One important change to note is that we do not have a street tire on here. Last time we dynoed, we had a street tire here. We do have an ET Street R Pius Fly, a very soft tire. We might see uh, you know, somewhere around 40, 50 wheel horsepower less, so in our comparisons, we just gotta keep it in mind. But we should be good to go with this big old Whipple on here. So I just wanted to note the big change in the rear tires and it will change the dyno number. Obviously it doesn't change the real horsepower that it's putting out. You ready to make some power? What you need? <laughs> All right, ready to make a full uh, 325, 10% pulley. Let's see what it does. I think we got some spark flow. Yeah, I think it definitely uh, blew out at the top. Yeah, it spark flow out. So. Alright, let's start digging. 922 on the torque. Yeah, first pull. I mean, that's on a soft tire, too. Yeah, yeah, we have to take that into account. Whenever you dyno on a drag radial, on this, this size drag radial, you're 30? Talking, you're talking like at least 40 or 50 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, we tested it. On yeah. the same setup, it made 1120 on the other dyno. SAE Smoothly Fine 5 Dyno Jet, it made 40, 50 less. All right, so I haven't checked the plugs uh, since I originally put this in. We saw pretty clear indications of some spark flow. We're gonna pull out the plugs and gap them real quick. They look great, but I'd say that's too big of a gap. Yeah, yeah. I think they might be it might even be up there at like 26 or 28. I yeah. can't remember. We had uh, 24 pounds on that board, so. Yeah, that's more boost than we saw with the uh, the old setup. Yep. Let's see what they're at. Yeah, they're close to, they're at 30 probably. Yeah. Yeah, 30. To bring them down to what, 22 or so? Probably 20, yeah, I'll probably set them at 20 actually. 20. Yeah, because they'll open up a little over time. Yeah. We probably set those at like 20, I'm guessing. We're at 30 now. Yeah. Alright, we gotta get them all out first. Yeah, let's film this. We got Ken and Rob. You better feel special here. Yeah, Not just on the keyboard body. today. Uh, I got you working today. Complete 
That's a nice shirt you got there. What is going on guys? We are about ready to get started on the GT500 3.8 Whipple. We got a pretty rowdy pulley set up on it. We also got some other things to test out today. And uh, it's been a little bit of a long process, you know, figuring out the right belt, right pulleys, and all this stuff. And on top of that, we have lower dyno numbers because of the bias by tire. When we dynoed the previous blower, we had a street tire, a Indy Firehawk, which is a hard tire. It'll do at least like 50 horsepower higher, uh, maybe even more with a bias ply on the dyno. I have had the biggest struggle trying to find wheels. I actually, I actually mounted up my uh, bead locks that I have for the bullet to try to fit these on the car, and these didn't fit the GT500. Ken tried these wheels on the GT500. They didn't fit, which are the same as those. So we've just had a really hard time finding a dyno tire, so that's why we're still on a bias ply. At the end of the day, the dyno numbers don't really matter, but obviously there's gonna be a lot of people who are saying like, comparing these numbers to the VMP, and we can compare them, but we have to remember that there's a good at least 40, 50 wheel horsepower difference, maybe even more, and uh, we'll see on the trap speed when we take it to the track. So let's go make a pull. So obviously at this point you can see Ken and I were both frustrated. We didn't know why the car was only picking up 10 wheel horsepower going from a 3.0 to 325 pulley. We should be seeing much larger gains and there has to be some sort of restriction. All right, so we've been struggling with this car and the reason why this video has been taking so long is we've been trying to figure out what the restriction is because we tried everything from a 3.75 all the way down to a 3.0 pulley without seeing much gains. So there's gotta be some sort of issue. We were thinking we were having bell slip. Our friends over at 1320 Junkie, Jason, uh, sent us over the DD149 and we're gonna throw this on the car, see if the cold air is being our restriction because we have been struggling and we're gonna try it. So let's go ahead and slap this on here and see what happens. Sunshine. <laughs> Alright, so we have the DD149 on. We're going to make a hit and see what happens. We're looking at the graph. We're really hoping that this is the reason why the boost is down. If it is, then maybe we just went past the limit of the JLT148. It was working well, but I don't know. Let's just see what the data shows. Um, the only change that we have made uh, to the tune so far is for the throttle body, and now we're making a change for the map curve for the DD149. So let's hope we pick up some good power. We, we've been chasing this for a week. This is not yeah. this is not a tuning issue. This is just figuring out the new setup. Yeah, basically when you get into this range, like everybody wants to make big power. But, and obviously we do a lot of big power cars here. And you know, this is probably blower wise, like the third most powerful GT500 we've had on here. And obviously the first one with the 3.8, you know, which the blower hasn't been completely worked out knowing what belt. So, you know, when we were having some issues, we didn't know if we were fighting uh, any issues with belt size and uh, slip, but 
It looks like we outran the uh, intake that was on the guard, and then you know that's pretty much the same exact tune, um, other than changes for the cold air intake, and you know we're at 61 horsepower, so yeah. make some changes and try to crack uh, 1200 with that. I think we'll get there. Yeah. How's she looking, Rob? Close. So this has been a roller coaster and it's going to be a lot of fun to edit, but the car is taken back apart. Uh, we got the crank support off again. There's a lot of things that have changed with this and we're trying to figure out a bunch of things. We're also battling a uh, stock part on the car that's caused a lot of issues before. That was the stock tensioner. This is actually a 2020 GT500 uh, tensioner from Whipple, billet tensioner, and we're going to be throwing this on the car. We went and machined one of these spacers so that works. Hopefully this works on the car and it'll fix our issues with the stock tensioner. Let's go ahead and throw it back on and then uh, our goal is to shoot for 1200. So we've now been here for like seven hours. And for any of you mother bitches out there who say I don't work on cars. There's security footage, there's cameras in here somewhere. I'm gonna ask Ken for it. I pulled up this crank support about 15 times. Matt Coates, MFB, you're awesome, make awesome products. But when we're diagnosing belt issues, it's not fun. <laughs> but I do know how to take off this crank support. You should sign up to be a registered tech. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to make a video of some sort of all the different issues that we've been having and things we're learning and trying new things. It's not even the Whipple. The Whipple's doing its job. It's just dealing with a lot of other issues. We're trying to use Whipple tensioner and uh, stock tensioner broke again. I'm frustrated as you can tell. Don't normally swear. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no, no. That, we're good. We're good. That's, that's normal. You can tell I'm flustered. I think that noise is just the sound of freedom flying. Just think about it this way. When you watch YouTubers take things apart, put them back together, take them apart, put them back together, you guys watch in a, in a span of like a few minutes. This has been, it's been four days. Hit the like button, comment down below. Do, do something. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Andrew is borderline depressed about this right now. I think it's going crazy. Ugh. Professional at all this now. I've never smoked or drank in my life, but I think I'm about to start. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to use one of those? Because your subscribers say you don't. Not a clue. Uh, Not a freaking clue. didn't solve our other problems. Should we show them? I don't even know what I've showed so far. <laughs> we're we're going to have fun editing this video and trying to fill in the gaps of all our frustration and trying to make it look smooth. Not that we're trying to make it... Not that we're there is to, no making this look smooth. Well, it's, it's not that... I didn't film a lot of this because we thought every step of the way we'd be like, oh, we'll fix that real quick. We'll fix that real quick. We don't need to film that. And now we're like... Shout out to Bumpy Steino. Tuning's been awesome. There's there's no tuning issue. They're just patient and letting us. I mean, the only thing decent is we get to look at this beautiful thing when you get angry. Can't complain about that. Yeah, no throwing wrenches in here, Alex. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, a little short. The belt looks good. Alright. Just pulled it short, right? Yeah, I didn't mean to. I thought. That's the first time I pulled that car. Or, you know, maybe yep. moment, so. Yeah, we're good. So, did the belt stay on? Yeah, it, it uh, looks good. I didn't uh, see any drama. That's good news. Man, yeah, what a day. Huh? Yeah. Alright. Alright, we're good. Let's take a five minute break and then we're gonna. You want to just explain for a second all the tinkering we have done? Yeah, God, it's been so much. I don't even know where we left off. But basically, um, you know, we were fighting, obviously, making max power, which we started to make up here. Uh, but unfortunately, we had a belt issue. We were fighting, we were fighting the stock tensioner to begin with. Uh, and then we had an issue with that. And then we decided to try to get a Whipple 2020 GT500 tensioner to work, which sort of worked, but it hit another pulley, and uh, with the MFP crank uh, bracket, it didn't line up to where we had to, uh, you know, to work it to get the belt on and off, so we came up with a bolt deal, uh, and then we still weren't sure if it was going to work, so that's great news, the belt's on, but I think we're ready to rock. Sweet. I'm sure I missed something. <laughs> yeah, probably. They, I definitely got a clip of me, like, super sarcastic. Swearing at the camera, which doesn't happen often, but I'm a lot happier than I was 10 minutes ago. That's yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's a big jump. I didn't expect that. I didn't even look at the graph. <laughs> that was worth three days of hell. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's a big Dude, difference. This tire is so high game. It, this that's third <laughs> that's gotta be pretty damn close to thirteen hundred on yeah, a street tire. That, 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 dude, the tire's so hot you can't touch it. The blower was hot. It's I mean 87 degrees in here, 64% humidity. Even the pressure's kind of low for around here. So, man, I am so excited. <laughs> that That's what we needed. And that's what we've that, been waiting yeah, for like, this whole time. Yeah, I thought we were like, kind of like, pretty good, but that's insane. Absolutely insane. I'm excited. All right. Yep. All right, so, we made some good power. We're on a Pius Fly tire. We're making some serious steam. Um, sounds like, we're gonna make a few tweaks to the car tomorrow to make sure it's good for the track, but uh, I haven't put the anti-roll bar in, but it sounds like we might just go right to the track and see what it traps. I don't think it's gonna go eight, maybe it will, who knows. But um, this is, I don't even know how I'm gonna edit this video. Hopefully I'll figure it out when I'm editing this video, but obviously we kinda hit a wall with the JLT 148, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that JLT 148. It supported a lot of horsepower from 800 to 1100 horsepower. So I don't want anyone like trashing JLT, but obviously 1320 Junkie, uh, the DD 149 uh, flows better, especially for this application. So these big blowers. And Jason was telling me the whole time, he said, you need to put this intake on it. Dustin Whipple was saying, you need to put this intake on it. So we did it, it picked up power, um, same tune, you know, same timing, and yeah. Now I did want to make this more scientific, you know, comparing to the previous setup, but we have had so many wrenches thrown in. I've made four trips down here to Palm Beach and I live three and a half hours away. So it's been a long road to get this set up, but I think we finally got it under wraps and uh, I think we'll go to the track and I have no idea what we're on, but hopefully we can get a good track speed out of it. So we may have torn up my bias fly tires, so I probably need more bias fly tires. And hopefully eventually we can get it on the dyno with a street tire and see it crack Thursday because we gotta be pretty dang close. All right, so it's been a long four days and huge thanks to Ken, obviously Palm Beach Dino and Rob, everybody pretty much. Yeah, I mean, all three. Uh, it's like what, made seven or eight <laughs> o'clock now? And we're, yeah. I'm a little needy, but uh, <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, left the car, made multiple trips, but we finally pretty much got it down. Yeah. And it wasn't a tuning issue. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, whenever you have a new combo like this, you always run into those sorts of things. Uh, we ran into like, it seemed like every step <laughs> of the way there was a problem, but I'm happy that it wound up the way it did because I honestly, you know, it's unsure there exactly. I mean, we were 
up good, but then when we you know made that jump up to the 1220, it was definitely worth all that time and effort. Yeah, and we're gonna run it tomorrow at the track if everything goes well. So we know the number is low because of the bias fly. Yep. So trap speed will tell it all. Yeah, I can't wait to see. I'm not even gonna put a number on it. Let's just see what it does. Yeah. So make sure you slap the like button down below. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you guys need Palm Beach Dino Tuning, they're always here. Links down in the description and their YouTube channel. And we'll see you in the next one.